Good afternoon, buenas tardes, and thank you for tuning in. On behalf of Mitchell Kaplan, Miami Book Fair, and all of us at Books and Books in Miami, Florida, I welcome you to a virtual afternoon with Sarah Sliger to discuss Take Me Apart, a spellbinding novel of psychological suspense that follows a young archivist's obsession with her subject's mysterious death as it threatens to destroy her fragile grasp on sanity. Sarah Sliger is an author and academic based in Los Angeles, where she teaches English and creative writing as a postdoctoral fellow at the University of Southern California. She holds a PhD in English from the University of Pennsylvania and a master's in history from the University of Cambridge. Her writing has been published in McSweeney's, Quartz, The Hairpin, and other outlets. Take Me Apart is her first novel. To moderate this afternoon's conversation, we're joined by Lauren Wilkinson. Lauren's debut novel, American Spy, was a Washington Post bestseller, an NAACP Image Award nominee, an Anthony Award nominee, and an Edgar Award nominee. It was shortlisted for the Center for Fiction's first novel prize and was included on Barack Obama's 2019 recommended reading list. Lauren's writing has appeared in Granta, the Believer, New York Magazine, and the New York Times, among other publications. Lauren splits her time between New York and LA, where she works as a writer for television. Throughout this afternoon's broadcast, you're invited to ask questions by clicking the Ask a Question feature at the bottom of the screen, and you can order your copy of Take Me Apart from Books and Books Below by pressing the green button. We appreciate each and every order and the generous donations from viewers everywhere. And now, without further ado, I'd like to welcome our guests to the virtual stage. Hi. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> that introduction, that was great. Like, <laughs> yeah, that was great. <laughs> I was about to say the same thing. Your voice is so calming. I feel like I need it on like an app when I'm having trouble sleeping or something. <laughs> So hi, how are you? How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. You're you're in LA now, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm in LA. So it's uh, I guess not that early now, actually. But um, I have my coffee and everything. So this is a. I mean, I'm asking you about. I will. I'm asking you a question about the book, but because I are you from are you from California? No, I'm actually, I'm from central Illinois. Yeah, so pretty far. <laughs> I was asking because um, California does really feel like a character in and of itself and take me apart. Um, so, I mean, was that intentional? Did you feel that you were, you you know, that it you were trying to capture something about the, um, about the state or what were your? Yeah, I think, um, you know, especially growing up in the Midwest, I feel like I've always been really in the idea of the ocean or like beaches and forests or mountains, like all of this is um, like very, felt very sort of like mythical to me when I was growing up and um, I was really entranced by it. And so I think um, when I like was in my twenties um, and I moved to the Bay area for six months and I was like, so excited because I had never been to California. I felt like it was this like big place in the American imagination. Um, and it sort of felt like this, really felt like this other world because I had like gone to school on the East Coast and grown up in the Midwest. Um, and I do think that, I mean, I think like the sort of natural wonders of California are a big part of the book and um, something that I really enjoy. But I also think that part of what um, I wanted to sort of get at in setting it in um, Marin County, north of San Francisco, is like kind of to think about the place that the state um, has in our imagination and how, um, you know, one of the main characters, um, one of the like protagonists is moving from New York to California and has this like feeling of like starting over or starting fresh. And I feel like that's um, a lot of a lot of people feel that way about California, and I wanted to kind of look at that and how those expectations may or may not be met. 
That's great. Thank you uh, for pulling that answer out of the question I asked you. <laughs> it was, this is, I felt that, um, I certainly felt that enchantment in while I was reading and I didn't know how to like best articulate it, but it felt, um, it felt really special to me in the book. So I just wanted to like, uh, to talk about it. So you actually had just mentioned your, your main character, Kate. Um, could you tell us a little bit about her for people who may not have, have read the book yet? And you know, yeah, so the book is sort of told through um, kind of, there's sort of like two protagonists whose point of view it kind of toggles between. And in the present day, there's Kate, who is, um, she used to be a journalist. She's been hired to archive the estate of this famous photographer who had died mysteriously um, like 20 years earlier. And um, so she moves to California. She's sort of escaping some things in New York. Um, and she moves to California, takes this job, and sort of like going through um, this woman's house, all of her, you know, different. Um, she's looking, you know, for photographic like prints that could be saved, but also um, preparing all of her things to be like auctioned off for like a university library or something like that. Um, and so the other part of the story is told through the kind of different archival documents that she finds in the house um, by this photographer whose name is Miranda Brand. Um, and so there's, you know, Miranda's like report cards for when she was little. There's, um, you know, postcards or letters she sent. There's um, her medical records. Um, and eventually Kate finds like a journal. And so those sort of like bits of um, found knowledge um, or like kind of ephemera are the other sort of half of the narrative. So it goes between Kate's narration and between all, all of these documents that you're that you're finding. Yeah, it's a very um, interesting structure, you know, and because, you know, Kate introduces herself off the bat as an archivist, you know, it really, the form certainly influences or informs the story that we're being told because you really do feel like, okay, this is the work of, it. Uh, the form imitates the work of kind of moving through somebody's life, I guess, um, the documents of their life. So um, did the structure come to you first or did you find it over the course of, of writing the book? The structure was definitely one of the main things that um, that was there really early on in the book. There were a lot of different things that changed, but um, I was really interested in like kind of simulating that experience of like, going through all these documents um, for the reader. I wanted to kind of like help the reader find, like feel this obsession that Kate's feeling. Um, and I also liked the idea of like having kind of a mystery that is uncovered um, through that process. And so you're sort of like finding these things along with Kate. Mm -hmm. So hopefully it feels a little bit like an investigation um, and like, uh, you know, there's this kind of like obsessive detective element, I think that kind of um, emerges. Um, Kate sort of like becomes an investigator um, into Miranda's death. Um, and yeah, so I, I definitely wanted that to be there from the really from the very beginning. And actually a lot of Miranda's diary entries were like some of the parts that stayed the most consistent like through the course of drafting the book, even as other elements changed. Um, so I felt like that um, that concept was there really early, but it did take a lot of time to figure out how to actually um, make it work because it's uh, hard to have Kate discovering things in the right order that like you also as the reader are discovering them and sometimes you know more than Kate does and vice versa and so it, was there, there were a lot of moving pieces, but it was definitely something that I wanted to be a part of the story from early on. Cool. Um, yeah, no, it did, I do, I did get that feeling <laughs> where I was okay. in, in <laughs> um, alongside Kate. So um, I'm curious about like just uh, some of the major things that have, that changed. Like what are some of the biggest changes from when you were first uh, writing the book to, to the finished um, version? Um, I mean, definitely parts of the plot changed a lot. Um, there was like some, there were also, you know, I like kind of messed around with the point of view at the beginning. Um, and 
So there were sections where like Kate's voice is told in like first person, but I feel like that's like pretty, pretty normal, you know, like whatever, finding the voice. But um, it had like several different endings at, um, at different points. I had like different like second halves. There were like some subplots that were like very soap opera-y. Um, and I, I didn't really, I didn't outline it ahead of writing it, which, you know, I think I'm trying to work on doing more um, because <laughs> I sort of like had such a sense of like the first half and then I got to the middle half and I was like, oh, I don't know like what happens now. So um, there are just a lot of like plot um, plot adjustments that I don't even know like, I don't even know if they're really like that, you know, interesting uh, was sort of like after finishing it, I was like, well, I'll, I'll try to like, I'll try to do that differently next time. Um, yeah, but one thing that did also change that was like small but sort of funny is that um, having like done a lot of archival research and stuff, I was like really interested in like capturing that sense of like boredom. I was like, oh yeah, like it's so like, you know, boring to go through all of these documents sometimes. Um, but then, you know, with my editor, we sort of realized that like maybe, you know, you don't want to like bore the reader in a thriller and that's not necessarily like an emotion that people are like seeking in their books. Um, and so I was like, it's, it's very difficult to bore the reader while also keeping them captivated. So um, I did end up like kind of changing some of the presentation of the of the documents and things like that. Um, Cause at first I was like, really wanted it to be really realistic and there were just parts that are hard to follow or that got boring um, because, sorry, by realistic, I mean like I wanted there to be a lot of, um, I wanted the documents to be like things you would actually find, um, which they are, but there's like more of like a narrative, like storytelling or something that happens through them than you would really find in the archives. So yeah. I think that was part of an adjustment. Uh, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you. It's, I find it really hard to outline and I'm always saying, okay, this time I'm gonna, I'm going to outline because it just feels like it would be so much more efficient. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like just for me, like I have to find it, you know, I just have to find it. So I'm, I'm yeah. in the same boat where I'm just like, next time I'm really, I'm going to outline, I promise. But that makes me feel better though, because, which I happen to have it because I was trying to display them earlier and they fell over. But American Spy by Lauren Wilkinson <laughs> is uh, <laughs> so wonderfully plotted that I feel like I'm like, Oh, everything fits together so so well there, and the fact that you also have that like constant revising, you know, yeah. I appreciate that. No, um, it was not. I had to start from the beginning, and I kept having that problem um, where you change something small in the beginning, and then it's like has this weird butterfly effect, and it becomes really big at the end, and you're like, okay, well, <laughs> yeah, no. One of those optical illusions of bridges where you look at it from one angle and they connect and then when you look at it from the other they don't you're like okay i guess i gotta start again <laughs> yeah and it's the worst is when it's like something that you're like if this is so it's just like a timing thing or something and you're like i just i just wish i could just like bend the laws of physics in some <laughs> way because the first half and the second half are good as they are but like i don't want but like they can't, but they don't work. And you know, and it's like, just yeah. yeah. And I then, hate the, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. I was just going to say, I, I kind of hate the term like plot plotters and pantsers or whatever, because I feel like nobody's really like one or the other. I also think the term pantser is like really like weird. Um, <laughs> but so I'm like, okay, you, know, you don't outline. I feel like pantsing is like a weird way to, weird way to like <laughs> refer to it. Um, but yeah, but I, I sort of like don't like that dichotomy because I feel like every author has like such a different method and every book like demands like a different method, but it is comforting to know that other people are also in that process of like, okay, like going back all the way to the beginning, I need to like start and work through this again. Yeah, cause you know, I think it's like, for me when you write an outline, it's like trying to learn a language from a book. You know, and like with an actually um, writing it is when you are learning about the characters. And that's like trying to learn the language, like, you know, trying to learn French and just going to Paris, <laughs> and like trying to talk to people and navigate 
through it. Like there are just things that you can learn um, about the characters through the context, like while you're writing them, that it's just, I find I, I just can't access um, in an outline, you know, and, and there, yeah. Like right now there are like, um, you know, like I'm, cause I've pivoted more toward writing for TV. It's like, you know, you have to outline first <laughs> before you, you know, cause that's like, a document people pay you for and everyone wants to they want they want you to write it but there are quite a few people and there's a lot of money so they're like hey we want to have some idea what you're doing and some like we want to have some opinion on it you can't just like just like a clue just like something you can't just like shut yourself off like the you know the novel where you kind of you know you have your relationship with your editor but for the most part people are just kind of letting you figure it out um they're like no we, <laughs> we want to know what's going on so yeah, I'm I'm finding that I need to write um, story outlines for like professional reasons, but still, like I know, I know that when I'm writing them, they're a little bit of a scam, because <laughs> I know I probably will do some of those things, but until I'm actually like in the story and seeing, understanding these characters emotionally, um, I, I can't really, I don't really know what's gonna happen. So. Yeah, totally. I um. With, I'm like finishing the draft of my second book now and like I did outline it before or like I and I had like a much clearer sense of like the whole arc of the plot and everything um and I was like so proud of myself and I was like great now I just need to like write it but then I feel like what happens often is like I outline it and then as you say like you get to know the characters more and you're like well this character like wouldn't make that series of decisions so like it doesn't it, it doesn't line up where like I could write the character that would make those decisions, but it wouldn't be like the the right character for this book. And so I feel like that's like for me where a lot of the adjusting is, is like trying to find the, like the voice and the motivation and how they are like, yeah, factoring into that, does, yeah, into the plot structure. Yeah, it's, a, it's not easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not an easy thing to do but um yeah even when you know when we read a book like yours where it looks like okay this was it feel it reads easily and i think sometimes people are like oh maybe it just flowed <laughs> it's like it's oh. a lot of work to to get yeah. to read <laughs> easily yeah but i also feel like that's like the a great compliment to me because i feel like i really like value creating that kind of like immersive Sense. So I'm glad that it, you know, has that feeling. Yeah. Um, Good. Yeah. Um, so you said you were working on your your second uh, novel right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm trying to finish up the draft and um, send it to my editor and finally have someone tell me whether it's like too wild, um, which I feel like is also it's like a good like like exciting to be like oh is this like too wild actually, I think that's like usually like a good sign right that you're like kind of doing something or challenging yourself um pushing yourself but I'm very excited to like have some feedback on it because I'm like so in it but um but yeah it's um I'll, I'll just let, yeah, I won't give like the whole, I don't even have like a good pitch yet, but it definitely is in like the vein of taking me apart. It has like this kind of like um, suspense element. It's like on this kind of remote island um, and uh, in Maine, so like the other side of the country. Um, there's kind of like a horror element um, as well. So I'm excited. I think it has like a similar sort of like um, tone, but um, yeah different story um i like that i like that uh the idea of it being <laughs> you've like flown across the country for this next one yeah they now have like yeah we'll have run out of oceans in the united states so i'll have to go to another ocean or something <laughs> um so yeah, so take me apart as your it was your first your debut what surprised you about the process of, of writing a book hmm um that's interesting. I was like, uh, what surprised you about the process of writing? I had like written some other, um, like some other manuscripts that are just like now like in a drawer somewhere. So I did feel, you know, like going into it, I felt like confident about, you know, the idea of like finishing the book was not um, as like 
I guess, precious to me because I'd sort of like been through that before. But I do think, um, you know, publishing the book and like the amount of like work that other people are putting into editing it, copy editing it, proofreading it, designing it. Um, the design for the book is like a little, uh, was a little tricky because like, I have it in front of me, but like, because there are all these like, you know, documents that aren't really like written in prose. Um, the designer at my publisher um, was like awesome. And, you know, we sort of had to do a lot of talking about like, how to actually present this information um, with my editor. Um, but just like having, I, I feel like all of those different voices were contributing to the book, you know, the publishing process in some ways, I feel like it also um, changed a bit like how I think about writing, which is such like a private activity. Um, but then when it also becomes like this creative effort from other people as well, I feel like, um, yeah, it's, it's, been, I'm, I'm trying to think of like, what would be like the precise word to describe it? I don't know, but I think like humbling and also um, I feel like the publishing process pushed my my writing further than like I expected it to in a really, in a really positive way. What about is TV? I mean, TV is like so like collaborative, right? Yeah, it, it is. We, we, I've, I've, I've lost you on my- um, Oh. Like you're just like you're a purple blur on my screen, but I can't oh, no. tell. I can't tell if that's general. But I feel like we can just just keep going. But maybe there might be a. I've lost your image as well. Um, really, and I think oh, it may okay. just be a momentary, you know, glitch in your uh, Wi-Fi. Oh, okay. Maybe. Um, okay. Do you want uh, me? Do you want me to close you out and prompt you back in? See if we can do it that uh, way, or. <laughs> Oh, I didn't hear. Oh, okay. Yep. Oh, cool. Does that work? Nope, no. not yet. Oh, okay, yeah. Actually, oh, I, oh. I can see you. Oh. I can't. <laughs> okay, I can come back in then. Um, yeah, do you want to kick me out and all Yeah, let me do that. Let me do that. Should I, should I vamp while Sarah's gone? Yeah, you just, yeah, do what, I, exactly, yes, yes, you should, you should. Um, we definitely, okay, there she is. Hi. Okay. It's weird, because I was, like, totally able to hear you and everything, so sorry I, about that. No, 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 I could hear you. Um, I just, yeah, you just suddenly were gone. Um, yeah. This is like saying, now we've switched sides of the screen. <laughs> It's like, it's like yeah. if we were in a, you know, in person and we just decided <laughs> halfway through to like switch seats. Yeah. That should be maybe a convention. <laughs> yeah, just like, yes, it's like jumping into the other person's shoes. You know, you're like, oh, I'll see things from your perspective now for a moment. Yeah. yeah um, <laughs> but you were saying that like TV is so like collaborative and I was just curious like how that has changed your sense of like the writing process in general and also like if you feel like that's changed how you think about books and novels? Um, well, I think it has changed the way that I think of myself more than anything because in the beginning, like when I first was writing my novel, I was like, there's no, they, they, you know, they asked me if I wanted to try to write the screenplay and I was like, there's no way, like I can't write for the screen. I can't, I just can't do it. It's too transparent. I felt like, I felt like I could hide my flaws more and, um, in a novel for some reason, even though novels are like, not as long as they're easy. <laughs> or I just felt like- You, you have know. your name really big on the cover. I feel like it's like more- uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's actually one thing though that I have really enjoyed about um, TV writing is because it is collaborative. So it's not like, so if people don't like it, they're not, they would probably be like I'm mad at the actor, not like you, you know, they don't know really, they're not really like thinking about um, the writers, I guess like, unless they are, you know, handful of writers, but for the most part. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, but like, I think that I realized, okay, well, I actually can do this, you know, I, I can do this kind of thing and I can collaborate with a group of people to come up with a story. And I actually like it a lot more than um, I was expecting to. I actually think I might, I think I might prefer it in in certain certain ways like I think I'll write another novel but the big thing the big thing I noticed is that 
I would, I think it's probably made me more inclined to like reach out to my editor when I'm, I'm facing a problem and I know that I'm um, kind of like suspect that I'm going in the wrong way or I know that it's not perfect, but it's like, I can just reach out to her now. Like, um, because like when I was writing my book, I would <laughs> write that draft and spend like six, seven months on it only to be like, this is wrong. <laughs> this isn't right, <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. For help much earlier. But so when you're in a writer's room, you're pitching those ideas. So if the idea is not right, you know, instantaneously <laughs> like you know you, so it's like which could be can i guess in the beginning it can be a little embarrassing to pitch and then people, people are like mm, that's not really exactly right but it it does feel um it does bring that efficiency that i'd crave like in writing back because it, i'm not wait i don't find myself wasting time on on ideas that are just maybe good but just not right for what we're what we're trying to do um yeah, so it's been, I do think that I will bring that back to so just the willingness to be a little bit messy or like not give my best work, in, not not give my best work in the first draft because I can accept now after having worked more collaboratively that it's fine, <laughs> you know, like you're allowed to not, it's a, fir it's, it's a first draft, <laughs> like it's no one is expecting it to be perfect um but i did have to learn that lesson and it'll probably be a lesson i'll have to to relearn as i keep as i keep on um so well i guess speaking of lessons like that you know if you, if you no, were, sorry, i was just like i was like really thinking i was like yeah that sounds really great i like really would love <laughs> to, to have somebody like yeah, I mean, <laughs> tell me tell me like no don't yeah. do that i gotta say if you are <laughs> at all interested you should you should do it you should uh you know because it's not writing in my experience writing a book is about a billion times harder <laughs> um, it's just it than writing a script uh it felt like i trained in the you know marine corps to then get a job like as a lifeguard, you know, like that's like pays you very, very well. When, but in this training, you were doing it, not knowing how much you were going to get paid, and it was you were like in the muck and you know doing the the arm over arm kind. Of and now it's like really, um, it's it's much easier. Uh, it's just like a much easier way to to work. Um, and I have noticed that like a lot of novelists kind of feel like a little bit intimidated by it but i'm like no now that i'm, I'm not lying to you you can definitely do it <laughs> like it's you know um you should definitely i understand that fear but now that i'm kind of more on the tv side i'm yeah so oh but i was curious so you know i'm sure that there are people here who write, who are writers and who maybe would want a little bit of advice. So the way I thought I'd ask the question is, if you could go back in time to when you were writing, I'm taking you apart, what, you know, would you put a hand on your own shoulder and say, you know, whoa, 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 you know, what advice would you give, give yourself? Mm, um, I mean, I think that the main advice in terms of that book, which We've already covered as I would be like, why don't you like think about how you're actually going to get from like this point A to like point B and not just like assume that like the, the last like third will just like or like the middle, more like the third quarter will just like come to you suddenly. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, I guess I'm, try I'm just trying to think. I mean, I guess it's hard to think um, in terms of that because part of me is like, well, I'm happy with the book that came out and I don't know like that there would be another way to arrive at that particular book. Um, but I do think that, um, you know, I felt, you know, maybe in writing that book, like at the beginning, I felt this, um, like I really wanted to like get it done. And that's part of why I didn't like spend the time in that particular, like in this particular draft to like, think about what the whole like arc would be. 
And I do think that if I had like sat with the characters um, and the voice like a little bit more that I, I, I feel like some parts of it would have been like really rewarding. There are just like some very dark like moments where I was like, I have to delete like 60,000 words from this like 100,000 word um, book. And it was like very sad. Um, so yeah, but then at the same time, you know, I, I'm, like I said, I'm happy with how it came out. So, um, it's okay. But I think that sometimes, um, you know, there's this, uh, language of like, oh, like just do like the messy first draft, um, that I think is like definitely true in some respects. And I like, it's certainly something I tell my students a lot because like, it is hard, especially if you're like newer to writing to like get yourself to turn in like we're saying and like produce something that doesn't feel perfect. But I also think that there can sometimes be like, um, like maybe it's shifted, that advice is shifted in like the writing culture a little too far to the other extreme. And so there's this like um, intensity of like, oh, just like turn it out and like, there you go. And then like, you'll fix it from there. And I think like I probably would have benefited from some more like, thoughtful, intentional decision making um, at the beginning. But yeah, I, I mean, like it's sort of neither here nor there um, because I, I like, you know, like we've been talking about, I think writing through it is sort of the, the mean way to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Did you feel that you integrated writing this book like into the rest of your life well when you were doing your first one? Cause it is kind of like doing something you've never like unlike anything else. Um, so yeah well so it actually you know i was really really lucky um in how it worked out because i actually had written like a different book it was like a historical romance novel and i had like submitted to agents with that book and like gotten offers and i ended up signing with an agent based on that but for various like publishing reasons we know <laughs> it's boring but um you know, she and I decided that it would make more sense for me to like go into like writing um, something that was like more suspense, like more, cause I, I guess I'm just really interested in this blend of like literary and genre. And that's like something that like the thriller and suspense sort of genre is like really open to right now. Um, and so I had like signed with her and sort of like was, you know, writing this book with her and like having this, not not with her writing it, but like, I felt like I had some sense of it, like was going to like, you know, be finished, like, hope, you know, go on submission, maybe an unrealistic sense of like, whether it, like certainty it was gonna be published or whatever, but I felt this like certain sense. And um, I was doing my PhD at the time in American literature. Um, and, you know, because I was sort of like giving over a lot of my attention to this, um, I told, you know, like my advisor, I hadn't really ever told like anybody that I like wrote fiction ever. So, um, but I was really lucky because they were so supportive. And I think actually, um, you know, a lot of my mentors and friends had good like ideas for how to kind of like work these two together. And so I started doing more like teaching creative writing and kind of like I feel like the blend of like balancing like academic research with creative writing actually like worked out. Um, I was like life in a way that I feel like is really uncommon. Um, and I felt really, really fortunate about. Yeah. I see three questions have come up. So I will, I'll just ask you one last question and then we can. Uh, switch over to the other question. So, um, although you have, you've gone away again. Um, no, oh, oh well, hmm. I think yeah. that's just the strength that's of right. the Wi-Fi. Okay, okay. So I can uh, either close such, you out and bring you back in again, or we can just wait and you should appear again. I think, um, okay. yeah, let's just wait. And I can, and I can still hear um, you, so it's, Okay. So, Do you want to? It looks like there's a question for you, so maybe you should answer that one, and then hopefully my Wi-Fi will come back. I'm so sorry. I don't. This usually isn't an issue, so I don't know why it's a problem today. But because technology is not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, for me, how did I get into to writing for TV? Um, so I uh, 
got a call to my agent from someone who read my book or read about my book and he this person was um by doing a show so i i spoke to him on like a friday and i flew out to la on monday to join this writer's room for 20 weeks you know after a conversation i'm just saying this Josh Applebaum. It turned out he was like a really, he, he's like written a whole bunch of stuff <laughs> um, that I heard of and, and he's written with like, he's got a group of um, collaborators and they're all very, um, you know, I've gone like a lot of meetings in TV and stuff. And every time I've gone on a general meeting, like people have heard him, you know, what this first um, experience I had was. So, yeah, it just happened because someone read my book and then they asked me if I wanted to join the writing room. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and it was one period of, it was like the last probably period of my life where I would have been able to just make such a sharp <laughs> uh, pivot, you know, to like move 2,000 miles away <laughs> over the course of a weekend. But um, I'm really glad that I did it. So Sarah, my question for you was, is there was there a character that was like hard to get right or is there a character that's hardest to get right and uh if so who, who was that and why um yeah definitely the character that was the hardest was actually kate the protagonist um and that is because miranda's voice which i think like most people who have read the book would agree with but it's like a very strong voice um in terms of like she just is like a very intense person um, and she like, you know, speaks or writes in like a, uh, both like a confrontational way sometimes. And also like there's, when she's, you know, writing in her journal or something, there's like, just like a transparency there. So I think like it, it's just a more direct voice. And um, it was difficult to like find a voice for Kate that um, balanced that and could kind of like stand up to it. Um, and yeah, and, and that was difficult because it's, you know, and then, you know, there's of course some readers who are like, oh, I just wish the whole thing were like written in Miranda's voice. But in terms of like creating, you know, kind of constructing a story you need, um, well, first of all, what I mean, I also like Kate's voice, but, um, there's like a level of like, um, plotting and detail and like logic that is really hard to convey through um, a voice like Miranda's. And so I needed like a voice that could communicate that, um, but also like, yeah, like stand stand up to Miranda's um, voice. And Kate's like a much more reserved character. Um, so just figuring out that balance, I think was the, was the trickiest part. Yeah, and it wasn't even actually, like in some ways it wasn't like her characterization that was so difficult. It was like the actual, just figuring out how to like render that characterization in some ways, if that makes sense. It does, yeah. Um, that's cool, I like that in, I like that in. Can you see me okay or not really? So now I'm like. Uh, yeah, you're oh, okay. 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 here. Okay. Um, so, yeah, let's go to the, the comment on the top. Um, why did you choose to make the main character an obsessive? And do you have a background in photography? Uh, why a photographer? Um, I, th I mean, in terms of like the obsessiveness, I mean, I think that was, you know, part of what I, that was just something that was really important to the book from the get go. And I think like, I just, I, I was just really interested in like rendering that sense of obsession um, and like kind of exploring the different ways that like different types of um, obsession can sort of like shape people's lives. I actually first reading this conversation thought it was talking about Miranda um, who is obsessive in certain ways, but I think it also, I think it actually is referring to Kate who is obsessive in different ways. So it's sort of interesting. I'm like, I guess every, they're all obsessive. Um, but yeah, I mean, just like that fascination with like an object or a person and like trying to gain meaning from that, uh, from that particular like thing that's apart from you. Like that's what I was really, um, really interested in. Um, and in terms of photography, I don't have a background um, in photography. 
um, in terms of like taking photographs at all. But um, I do love art. I studied like some art history um, and I feel like I have a really like visual kind of imagination. Um, and I was really interested in this kind of like period of um, photography as well in like the 70s and 80s. This like kind of like New York scene. It's just, it's, it's sort of like an interesting, um, an interesting scene. And so it's sort of a combination of like just thinking visually on my own and then also wanting to talk maybe about that moment um, in, in art history in terms of like what, you know, it might have been like to be um, a female photographer at that time. Um, and then, I mean, on like a theoretical level, I think photography is just really fascinating because it's like creating this illusion of this like preserved moment, but it's always like an illusion, right? Like the, um, especially if you're talking about like fine art photography, it's um, it's it's like a construction of like reality and you know, you're trying to like present this, um, this thing that to other people is like taken as real or like proof of something, but um, is actually really, um, you know, uh, really curated um, or invented. And so that's kind of a theme that comes up through the book is like, to what extent are like photographs like able to communicate reality. So on like a headier level, I mean, that's like something I was interested in, but um, that, that probably came about after I had already decided to like focus on the medium. I, I think it's really interesting that you said you have like a, a visual imagination. Does that come into play? Like, or how does it come into play when you are writing? Do you just, are you more, you just mm -hmm. sit, you can just really see the full picture of the scene that you're describing? And is it, you kind of get into the scene with like the visual first or? Yeah, I think so. I think, um, yeah, I think I often have like a sort of a visual for like I'm kind of like imagining the scene almost like a like a movie um, in my head and then trying to figure out how to like relate it. Um, and then, yeah, and then sort of trying to figure out how to translate that like visual element into writing, but like into writing that like produces the same emotional like tenor that I would have watching it. Like, I think I may have some like level and I think probably a lot of writers do of like synesthesia between like that. I, there are ways in which like certain words to me like have like a visual character. And so sort of trying to like balance those out. It's not a very clear answer, but I guess it's just something that happens in my brain that I, I'm, I guess I'm aware that I have this kind of like scene or image that I'm then trying to like convey. Um, yeah. yeah. I, but one, oh, go ahead. No, no. I was just gonna say one question I get a lot is like, oh, like, you know, was it hard to like create, you know, the photographs that are like described in the book? But that actually wasn't really hard because um, I don't have to make the photographs. I just have to like describe them. And then like someone else says like, they're good and worth a lot of money and in the book. And so you're like, oh, okay, it's like really good. Um, so it's like, it, that actually wasn't like that, <laughs> that difficult. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so I, I feel like I have, for some of the photographs, I do have a specific image in my mind of what I want it to look like. Um, and for others, it's more like the, the description of it or the, the theme of it that was more important to me. Yeah, I know it's kind of a tricky question because it is like about how you conceptualize the world. <laughs> you know? But I just saw it was, and it was very, it was a really good answer, especially on the fly. But I was just curious because like, you know, I think that I kind of get the visuals first. And I think that with my book, I started with an image, like I started with an image of a mother in a kitchen cooking. Um, and then, but then I think also that I am also like interested in, like I, I think what you said about the synesthesia too must come into play because it's like I'm I'm so interested in the like the the they, I am sure I'm it's very like clear to me that unless I'm feeling something strongly like readers aren't going to so I do kind of go through this like emotional um, journey 
And I think more recently, I've kind of started um, being aware that the emotion is coming maybe just like an instant ahead of the visuals in a way. I don't know. Mm -hmm. how, um, I don't know. So I was just like curious about um, you. And then I think there are probably people who like kind of have it, you know, like we're talking more about visuals and emotions and stuff, but I think there are probably people too who like come to it in like an intellectual way first. Like they just know X, Y, and Z has to happen. Um, but yeah, it, I think it's kind of interesting to see like the entry point of, of, a, of another writer's process. Yeah, that's, I think like this point about like the emotions coming before visuals, I think it's really interesting. I definitely think that, um, you know, I often like say that I think what comes to me like maybe earliest um, in writing is like the tone or like the feeling. Um, and I think that's true that that might like kind of like predate some of the visuals like in my mind um, or like happens, they happen very close together in some way, like creating this like um, this feeling of like the environment or like the scene. Um, is like is important um yeah but i also i think definitely i it's i'm really like i'm really interested in this question because i do i think about this all the time is like how do other like how do other writers get from that point of like like what what is happening in their head before like the writing so, yeah yeah and I, I also think that like the emotional stuff is like a good tool for revising for me or it's becoming one like i'm sort of like oh this character needs to be feeling this um for this scene to make sense and it's like so what would you be doing if you're feeling this <laughs> or what would this character be doing um so and i don't know it's nice because it feels like it's like a it's a new kind of guide through the through the story for me um but it's like it's nice it's like an it's a nice friend you know it's like hey <laughs> you can give me a shot too like you know tra track these emotions baby <laughs> I'm like oh, yeah okay. and you can like do that like gut check i mean i especially think like if you spend a long time with like uh with so long with a book that like you have like whole parts like more or less like memorized, but you can still, like there are still some lines that like in Take Me Apart that if I reread them, I feel like I'm like, oh, I was really able to capture that emotion. Um, and it's like, it's not like it's like most, of, you know, every line, but there's just like a couple of lines. And like, I think that's a really satisfying feeling to feel like that sentence for me still holds the emotion that I like wanted to create or that I felt like when I was first creating it. Yeah, yeah, I think that that's a really good, I feel like those are the, places where they feel like successful to me like i don't really read that much of my own <laughs> i don't really read my because but i know that like um sometimes i'll read something and it'll still make me feel like I'll be like oh yeah that still makes you feel sad like okay that is kind of what i was, I was trying to go through there uh, and i or it'll remind me that i was like feeling oh, kind of sad like when i was writing it sometimes it feels a little bit like um like method acting almost, you know, like really getting into it and getting into those feelings. Um, I was actually, I was talking to um, Liz Little, who is also um, a thriller writer. Uh, this was back before quarantine, I guess we were talking, but um, she was saying that like when she's writing, she's like, she's like having to like do like the gestures sometimes, and, like act out like what people are doing in the scene to see like how it like feels. Um, which I feel like I do in my imagination, but I was like, oh yeah, this is like a whole other level of like actually like doing the, the, the gestures and like fully inhabiting like the character in that way. It seems very useful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. After a while, they do become like someone separate from your invention. Yeah. Like you have to embody them, like how they would do something. It is, it's an interesting, um, interesting process. So our last question here is, is for the both of us. Um, can you share some of the writers that have inspired you? Yes, um, there are so many. I mean, I read really widely and I feel like I just sort of like love absorbing things. Um, but I think like in terms of in the genre, um, I think like Tana French is sort of someone who I feel has been like really, um, 
really inspirational to me. Um, I think Donna Tartt's The Secret History is like everybody says that, but I do think like that um, because of that feeling actually of like the mood and like the um, ambiance that's like created, um, I feel like those two authors um, were like really formative to me. Um, but yeah, I also feel like I'm just like inspired by like books that are still coming out and everything too. Um, and I really liked Susie Yang's White Ivy last year. I found like that was like a book that was like, I don't know, I just love that feeling of like you finish a book and you're like, oh, like I, yes, like this is what writing can do. This is so exciting. Um, I read like the most recent Ishiguro. I felt like that. I was like, but then I was like so inspired for a day and I was like, I can't do this. So like, this is like not, only he can do this. But um, yeah, that, that was great. Um, I, yeah, I was, uh, oh, I just read this book. It's coming out next year um, by Marie Rutkowski and um, it's called Real Easy. And it's like, it's so great. It's, this has, um, it's like set in a strip club in 1999 and the author like worked in a strip club at that time. And so there's like, it's just like has, all of these like details and it's like so sensory and like there's so many different characters and I just feel like this it's like the feelings that these authors are able to create that that I find really inspiring. Yeah. Um I always like freeze when I get this question. I know it's so <laughs> like, hard. Yeah. I like you know I I'm in I'm like anticipating it. There's something about it that I just like I have trouble. But I was going to I'm also reading Clara and the Sun, um the latest Ishiguro novel. And I am so inspired by him. I think he's probably my favorite living writer actually. Like and I think I'm the inspiration for me comes in like a professional sense too because like he's he's really not it's always literary, but he's not bound by genre, you know, not really. And I, um, I aspire to that <laughs> big time, you know, like to my first book is a spy thing. I just submitted a story that is, um, I think it's sci-fi. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, but it is like, um, we're going to see, cause I like just submitted it to my agent for her to like submit to, so we'll see what, to see what her her take on it is um yeah i just um oh I, but i you know i i should just look like i'm I, my eyes just fell on marlena by julie bunton that's like a oh book. yeah i have yeah. that up there too that's a great book and i think it's book. like the same it's like so emotionally evocative you know and i and i think it's um yeah i think there are so many i i think that's what inspires me the most where a book just like really make brings me which reminds me what literature can do like you said where it's like oh yeah <laughs> you I, i've like really gone on a journey yeah. with, with this author that's um that's amazing you know, yeah yeah totally i feel i just feel like any book that it's like it takes the reader on that journey and it like creates that experience like i don't know like the experience that the author like set out to do, I think like regardless of genre is like, I mean, on my bookshelf, we have like young adult, we have uh, Angie Thomas, um, we have like some romance novels, we have like is that a graphic no. novels. Like, there's, <laughs> like, there's, like, I mean, I have like a uh, theory of the novel, you know, I mean, that's, that's just something I have from like grad school, but you know, I feel like, I I feel like I what's most inspiring about this is a little bit of like a cop out of an answer, but it's just like reading across all these different genres and like seeing like that people are able to create use language in such like radically different ways to create stories that like captivate readers um, in like the within like the rules of that genre. I feel like that's um so it's sort of like the whole like collage is like this is inspiring. Yeah, I think I don't think that's a cop out. I think that's true. Like it's just like you can also, you know, just that that all these different genres because it kind of just expands your vision of what you can you can do as a writer. So it is really inspirational. And then also, you know, 
I don't want to do it like in a way that I'm keeping up with the Joneses, but it is good to know what other people are writing, <laughs> you know, like just like, you know, your friends, it's good to read them. And it's also good to know like what's happening uh, in books, I think, because it's like, you know, you just want to know what's, you know what's going on. It's just like a good check in. Um, yeah, it's like a conversation, like participating yeah. in a conversation. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I wanted to come back on <laughs> and tell you, thank you. This is, has been an amazing conversation. Uh, I have such great admiration for what writers do. I mean, the fact, when you think about the fact, as you were talking about method acting and acting things out, these people come from you. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you realize how remarkable that is? What a creative act that is that you are living all of these simultaneous lives, creating all of these characters, inhabiting all of these worlds. That is amazing, amazing, truly. So I have great admiration for the work that you do on a daily basis. Uh, we hosted Kazuo Ishiguro oh, in conversation with Neil Gaiman. And that was really wonderful. And I have to say, Clara and the Sun was I think a masterpiece too. I mean, I it's it. so yeah. profound. It lived with me for such a long time also and just touched me very deeply. But, you know, we read, all of us, I think are reading galleys. We're reading in advance. We're reading things that friends are writing, things that, you know, books that are going to come out next year. So I, I agree. It's, it's a really interesting um, process. And I, I think um, we're very lucky to be a part of it. Um, so two books that came to mind were Possession and Lost Children Archives. Have you read any one of those? I the, the came to mind as far as the structure. I haven't read your book yet. It's on my list. But um, I, um, I have read Possession. Yeah. Um, and that was something that I had I had read like quite a, like at least a few years before um, writing this book and had sort of like thought about um, through writing it. I haven't read Lost Children Archive yet, although I've heard it's really great and I have been meaning to um, have a meeting to read it. I've heard like a lot of her, I've, I've heard great things about her writing in general, but I haven't read any of it yet. I think you'd find it really interesting because yeah. it, it does, you know, um, she is doing research and she's doing an oral history and she's keeping a doc, you know, all of those things. So that's, that's really interesting as well. So I just, I want to thank you on behalf of Books and Books for being with us, for supporting indie bookstores. I want to remind everyone watching that all you have to do is click that green button and we're going to ship off a copy of Take Me Apart to you. If you're in Miami and you want to come by one of our stores and pick up a copy, we welcome that too. Um, and then just say that I hope our paths will cross someday in Miami. <laughs> I hope so too. I've never been to Miami. <laughs> so Miami Book Fair happens at the the week before thanksgiving in november and we're planning it so maybe you'll join us right okay maybe <laughs> the world will be you know <laughs> let's, let's see, let's see oh, right yeah hopefully okay well thank you so much for having us christina and thank you so much lauren for the questions this was very awesome which were great to talk to you. Just fascinating to hear all of it and, and hear about writing for television as well, because I read like a maniac, but I also watch a lot of TV. Yeah. <laughs> and I think the world is, you know, I think now is like every writer that you talk to is in, you know, is a showrunner or is in a writing room or, I mean, like we're hungry for content. So um, I'm sure that that's just going to continue growing. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for joining us and and be well. Keep doing thank what you, you do. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Bye, Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.